Our preparation for this match was the same as usual. The first step was to figure out the map vetoes to determine what map will likely be played. If you'd like to learn more about the veto phase, there will be a link in the top right of this video where I talk more about it during another match we had this season. After doing the vetoes, I determined that Ancient was the most likely map that we would play. So the next step was to download one of our opponent's demos on Ancient to figure out what their style looked like. Luckily, they played this map in their previous match, so we had very recent data to go off of. The primary thing that you want to look for when reviewing another team's demo, especially at lower levels, is their individual tendencies. This is because at lower levels, teams often lack a strict structure and rely much more on individual plays and decision making to win their games. So what you have to do when watching their previous matches is identify the plays that the individuals on the team like to make and figure out how your team can counter them. In the case of our opponents, I was able to identify that they usually ran a 1-2-2 setup on their CT side defaults unless they had an op. They really liked to take cave control and fight for middle if the T's did not heavily contest it. And when they had an op, they liked to move it around the map between Donut, Temple, and Banana. They typically never had their middle player leave house, even when they had an op. This meant that during rounds where they had no op, if we wanted to do an easy late round execute, we could intentionally give up middle control at the beginning of the round and default to Lurker towards B main. Once the time in the round started to run low, we could rotate towards A and throw a full execute. The most likely positions of the other players in this scenario would be one on the bomb site or inside of Temple, and one inside of Donut. In the worst case scenario, this would theoretically give us a 2 on 5 advantage while taking the bomb site. This type of logic is good to apply when reviewing demos, and I recommend building your game plan this way. It's obviously not bulletproof, and if a team is conscious of the fact that you reviewed their past matches, they may switch things up. I wouldn't worry too much about this, however, as it will be easy to identify pretty quickly during your match if the other team has changed how they play. In that situation, instead of knowing what they will do, you know what they won't do. So you can try to apply inverse logic to the game plan that you built, and essentially run the opposite of what you've prepared. This might sound a little confusing, and I plan to make a more in-depth video on this topic in the future. The plan for this round was to throw a full A execute from the start, as I saw in their demo, that they played two players Donut and two inside of Cave on Pistol. This meant that if Donut was smoked, no one was available to hold A site, and we could plant for free. On top of this, the rotates would be slow as they would have to run through middle from cave into donut, or go all the way back to CT spawn. Fortunately in the match, they ran a similar pistol. However, we made some mistakes when we hit the bomb site. As we came out of A main, their middle player had rotated to temple already and killed one of us who swung too wide. We then tried to push temple in order to trade this player, which gave him two more before we could do anything with the execute that we threw. This made the round unwinnable and we ended up losing with a bomb plant. In retrospect, I should have communicated to my players before the match that because Temple is the only spot that was open, we should boost onto Plat or jump around it in order to make the kill for that player more difficult. Another alternative would be replacing one of our Molotovs with two flashes and flashing Temple before we came out of A-Man. The first phase of our T-side did not go well. We forced after the pistol and tried a fast B-rush to overwhelm the two players that defaulted there. This did not end up being successful and the majority of us died near ramp before we could get into the bomb site. After an eco that we also lost, we tried to do a late A split through middle for our first gun round. Even though we were able to take middle, we fumbled our utility while taking donut and made it possible for the solo player there to get two of us. This led to another round loss, which made us now 0-4 down. This was not a great start to the half and we had to start getting rounds on the board. On the bad side, our plan was not working. On the bright side, however, the enemy team was playing just like they did in their demo. This meant that their default was a 1-2-2, and they likely did not have an off yet. I decided that we would try to take some map control towards B and run one of our cave defaults. Surprisingly, they did not contest cave this round, and we were able to essentially walk into B with no one ready for us. I think that we were able to catch them out during a lapse in communication here, and we capitalized on the opportunity. This led to an easy first round, and took off some of the pressure of getting a win. In the next five rounds that followed, we were able to get three more wins by exploiting their weaknesses towards A. We did this by running some executes out of spawn and splitting the bomb site late round. At this point, the score was 6-4 in our opponent's favor and we still needed a lot of rounds if we were going to feel comfortable going into our CT side. For the final phase of the half, we mainly focused on running defaults towards B in middle, as we had been abusing A heavily up to this point. Because of this, the CTs made some mistakes and overpeaked towards B in order to get info, as they assumed we would be ending towards A. This ended up making it so that in half the rounds, we got early kills B and just took the site, 
and in the other half, we would get a kill in the mid round and force rotations towards B. Here we could just end with a simple A split and have a significant man advantage while taking the bomb site. A really great round from us was round 13. We ended up losing the trade battle in cave and we were left in a 3 versus 4. 2-6 made a good individual play in middle and quickly returned it to an even 3 versus 3. From here, we waited out the other team to see if they would make a mistake. The mistake that they ended up making was a deep B ramp smoke. This let us get close and pop flash into the B site with an easy kill. The afterplant that followed was good from us as we were able to trade out the remaining CTs. This final phase of the half ended up working really well as we were able to get 4 more rounds. This meant that the half ended 8-7 in our favor without the pistol round. This felt pretty good as it meant in the majority of gun rounds we were the better team. For this pistol round, I decided we would do a direct counter to the pistol that they ran in their previous game as so far, they were playing the exact same way. They ran a B rush where 4 players ran up B ramp and fought for long B control. To counter this, we had 2 players in the long B cubbies and me baiting for them. Although they ran this exact pistol, this counter didn't end up working as our opponents just hit better shots than us. I also made the mistake of being way too wide when fighting the first player. After losing the pistol, we tried to win a force buy and came extremely close. Unfortunately, things didn't work out in our favor and after an eco, we were starting our first gun round down 8-10. to 10. After a good A retake and a clean anti-eco, we were able to return the score to an even 10-10. to 10. On round 21, we lost an honestly unacceptable 1 vs 3. For some reason our communication completely broke down and we were all on separate pages. Here's that round with voice comms so you can hear what happens. One close cave. Killed him. One. Unknown. It's him. Uh, lane. Lane. B. It's him. He's there. One in a cave. He's in a cave now. Yeah, bomb. They're both really low. Oh, yeah. NT, NT. I couldn't tell okay, can we swap? Ken, drop me up. It's fine. We'll get this round. That was like monkey. After this round loss, we had two options. Either we let it tilt us and slowly lose the game from frustration, or we look past it and continue to win the rounds that we needed to close out the game. When you lose a round like this, it's important to look at the positives. Up until the 1v3, we made the correct plays and outplayed our opponent. If we continue to play like this in the remaining rounds, we are likely to win the game as this 1v3 was a rare occurrence and it was not likely to happen again. This back and forth style continued as the game went on up until the score reached 15-14 in our favor. This was a difficult game for us and it was important that we ended it on round 30 as overtime at this point would likely have made the match even harder. Instead of explaining how this last round played out, I'll show you my POV during the match so that you can see the big mistake that I made and how my team was able to recover the situation and close out the game. And then, me and Charles, um, can like drop again. go down banana. So yeah, I'll drop. We gotta be after, listen, after we triple nade, I'm going straight to donut because they might run out A because they hear the triple nade. Okay. I'll go for just go and do it next to them. Alright, let's get this. Yep. What? Nice. Could be mid. Yeah. One smoke A. I think B. We're in, we're in, we're in, we're in. They're out A. You can win this retake. 3v3. Calm. You got this. Walked up I'm and turn I don't you have smoke spray, man. I have a smoke and I Double have swing. a. Three, two. I'm Molly, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let 2 6 come out now. Smoke that out. 2 6 is coming out. Get on bomb, 2 6. Just hold it. Everyone else covers it. I'm defusing the bomb. Nice fucking job. Good round. Perfect retake. Yeah, I'm ready to go again, bro. Yeah, is that ready? I'll wait, I'll wait for the OT, guys. Come on. Oh, uh, stressful. Fuck. That's a fun game. I'm, I like yeah. that. You don't play CS because it's easy. 
There were a couple of mistakes that I made in that scenario, which made for a much more difficult round than it had to be. The first mistake was scoping way too late inside a donut. The T's likely heard this and knew that I was going to be there. The next mistake was I communicated that only one smoke was thrown in. In reality, it was three smokes that landed in rapid succession. This meant that there were probably three plus players in A main. The last mistake I made was taking too wide of an angle. I exposed myself to the boost which the T's used and got myself killed with no impact. This was not the most comfortable win from us, but I'm satisfied with how we were able to handle the close score of the match the whole way through and not tilt during the multiple times that we were down rounds or when we got 1v3. What matters at the end of the day is that we were able to win the match regardless of the mistakes that we made. That's all for this video, and if you enjoy this type of content, let me know. Thanks for watching.